All right, so Victor Wimbanyama just continues to shock NBA fans. Last season, we were shocked at what he was doing on a night in and night out basis, and it just continues to happen. I'm just never going to be used to seeing a seven foot four guy as tall as he is, as lanky as he is, and really measuring him up with other seven foot plus players in NBA history. I'm never going to get used to seeing a guy like him do the things that he is doing on the basketball court. There was just a play last night against the Rockets in their second game of the season that just made me shake my head in utter disbelief, where he just confidently, early in the shot clock, pulls up from the logo and knocks it down. Just confidently was so nonchalant about it. It's already weird seeing guys like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard and even LeBron at times do that. It's even weirder seeing a seven foot four guy do that with so much confidence. The jump shot looks amazing. Like I said that a million times about women Yama, the jump shot looks so clean. There aren't really many mechanical errors at all with his jumper at seven foot four with the size of his hands and just how tall he is as a player. It is a great technically sound jump shot and he can just confidently knock those types of shots down then he also comes down the other end a couple of plays afterwards and does this has he pull up three from the top of the key just ridiculous stuff he just continues to impress us night in and night out um i'm gonna also say this and i don't want to be repetitive because i know this is a very common conversation had by even casual fans on nba social media these goat conversations i know we have these conversations a little bit too much and i'm contributing to it a little bit here but i really don't care has there been a player so early in their career that we are so confident in their ability to potentially be the greatest player of all time this early, right? Like if you look at women, Yama, if all of the uncontrollables don't end up being a hindrance to him, like injuries and stuff like that, if things go right for him from a health standpoint and all of that, and if he just keeps his head screwed on right, which I don't have any doubts about, I really do feel so confident in his ability to be looked at as the greatest player of all time, or at least being in that conversation. Has there been another player so early in their career where we felt like that? Where like in year one or year two, we're like, I'd be surprised if he doesn't end up in those GOAT conversations when it comes down to it. Maybe LeBron. LeBron may be the only player. Maybe Luka because Luka was so impressive, especially in that second season where he had amazing moments and was great in the playoffs too for that Maverick squad against the Clippers in 2020 in the bubble. Maybe those two. And let's see if we can name other guys. I mean, obviously Jordan, because at that time, the history of the NBA was relatively shorter. So there weren't too many players he was competing against, too many legacies he was competing against relative to like a guy like LeBron or Kobe or Wimbin Yama himself, if he ends up in those conversations. So Jordan, maybe Magic, Larry Bird. But again, like I said, the NBA wasn't existent for that long when they came into the league you know, during their first two seasons. So like at least looking at the modern era, right? Or let's go like the last 25 seasons. Has there been another player who so early in their career in their first season or second season where we felt like we'd be surprised if they don't end up in GOAT conversations? There are not many. Wimbenyama is just simply going to be that type of player where we look at him and anything short of him being in GOAT conversations or at worst top five player of all time conversations, it's going to be looked at as a disappointment. And I know Wimbenyama said this, and I really do agree with him, that he doesn't care about other people's expectations. I get that. But just his skill set, the things that he can do at seven foot four, handling the ball, the jump shooting ability, the ridiculous athleticism, all of that stuff, the passing ability, because he's also a very underrated passer and also simply the defensive upside. He has potential to be the greatest defender also of all time being a mobile seven foot four guy, right? Like with looking at that skill set, you can't help but think this dude is going to end up in that conversation sometime down the road. He is on a short list of players where we felt like that so, so early on in their career. So just keep that in mind. Amazing stuff so far here from women. Yama, if the Spurs were decent enough, as we all kind of know, he's going to end up in defensive player of the year conversations once again, and possibly all NBA conversations just in year two. One thing I've also been impressed with so far this season, and it's just been two games here for the Spurs. I think two or three games here for the Spurs. I could be wrong. I have to go back and look. But one thing I've been impressed with is 
just the many different ways that you can utilize him in your offense. So we've seen him pulling up from the top of the key, bringing the ball up court here and there, shot creating from outside the three-point line. That's something we've seen him do a little bit. There was even in the second half, like a step back on the right corner from three where he drained it with a defender right in his face. There's that. Then we've also seen Coach Popovich put him in situations where he's kind of facing up a little bit or operating from the mid-range area, which is one area that I just love to see him master because he'd be virtually unguardable. He can get his shot up above anybody right so there's also that and we're also seeing him in pick and pop scenarios and when he's on the floor with chris paul a ton of pick and roll scenarios just tough to stop him in that type of situation there's just a large array of ways that you can use victor Wimanyama within your offense so we talk so much about his skill set that skill set also means that a coach can be so creative and so versatile in how they use you within the offense similar to like a lebron you can run lebron at the five but you can also run Run LeBron at the point. There were years where LeBron was operating as a four here and there, doing a lot of off-ball stuff, doing a lot of posting up, especially in his days in Miami. But there were also seasons where he was operating as a point guard. The year he won that title for the Lakers in 2020, he was the Lakers starting point guard. He was like he started at the point guard position for that team. And I think that season had a career high in assists. So Wimbenyama is just one of those guys where a coach can put him in so many different situations on offense that really there's no one way to virtually be able to stop him. Not a lot of guys are simply like that. Simple as that. Like, let's look at the top five right now of all time. Here's who I consider top five of all time. LeBron James, and this is in no order. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Hakeem Olajuwon. Argue with me on that list or feel however you want to feel about that list, but that's my list. Let's think about some even honorable mention guys, Magic Johnson, uh, maybe Shaq. Like, let's throw those guys in that conversation. There are only a few of those guys that I've mentioned where you can really play them outside of their position. You can't play Kareem outside of his position. You can't play Hakeem Olajuwon outside of his position. And I get that because he's a big man. You can't play Shaq outside of his position, right? So only guys you really can do that with Kobe, but really, did you want Kobe to play the three a ton? Did you want Kobe to be a point guard a ton? But you could do it. You could experiment with it. Michael Jordan, there were years where they experimented or times where they experimented with Michael Jordan operating as a point guard. There was a stretch where he played the point in the late 80s and averaged a triple-double. LeBron, who was probably the best when it comes to that, when it comes to playing outside of his position. But those guys that I just named... Only a rare few can really, really play outside of their position. We saw Magic do it. He played the point for his entire career. But there was that one season where he played center in the NBA Finals and helped his team win a championship in his rookie year. But such a small amount of guys where you can really play them so many ways outside of their position and you can really be super versatile with how you use them within their offense. Simple as that. Like Shaq and Akeem and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, three guys that I named who could easily be top five of all time, you had to really play them through the post. And with Akeem, you could run him off of like these pin down and curl actions and get him to a mid-range jumper here and there. But primarily, their game was restricted to the interior, right? So Wimbenyama is just such a unique player because especially as a big, where other bigs in NBA history had limitations to having their game restricted into the paint, you can play Wimbenyama in so many different situations. In so many different ways. It can be outside the three-point line as a creator, outside the three-point line as a pick-and-pop guy, mid-range guy where you can post him up around that area or have him face up, and as a pick-and-roll threat. It's just so many ways that you can truly utilize him. And we're kind of getting a glimpse into that this season here for the Spurs where Popovich is just putting him in so many different situations, and he looks so comfortable in it, right? Like, it's not like he doesn't look good in certain situations. He looks good playing the mid-range game. He looks good playing the three-point line and operating as a creator out of there, operating as a pick-and-pop guy out of there. Yes, he has to sharpen some things up, especially in the mid-range area, but still, he looks like he can attack so many different spots. So I love that about women, Yama, is there are so many different ways that you can just utilize him within the offense. We are getting a massive glimpse at that this season, and it's also going to be even more apparent because he's playing with a really good true point guard in Chris Paul. One thing for Wimby to focus on throughout the rest of the season is just finding those attack points and mastering those attack points. That's what really separates a lot of younger guys who come into the league as these amazing scorers 
right? And guys were able to make that translate into the playoffs and ultimately translate to possible championships. So I say that looking at Jace Tatum in particular, one reason Jace Tatum works as a player is JT knows how to consistently find his spots and find his kill spots and know where he needs to operate as a shot creator. That's something I wish for Anthony Edwards and also Victor Wimanyama. That is one thing that we just have to continue to see with Wimanyama is how much can he find those kill spots, get to those kill spots and get right into where he needs to get at, right? That's one thing to take a look on here for Victor Wimanyama. But again, it's early in the season, but so far what we have seen has been so impressive Relative to last season, there are more ways in which Popovich is just using him on the offensive end. I can't wait to see how things look moving down the road. But Wimbenyama just continues to impress NBA fans. As I said, I'm never truly going to get used to seeing a seven foot four guy doing the things that he can do. So we'll see what ends up happening the rest of the season down here for San Antonio. But good start for Wimbenyama. Great win last night against that Rockets team, against a quality Rockets team. And we'll see what the rest of the season has in store for Wimby and the San Antonio Spurs.